Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be adding the ability for users to add posts that will then show up on the homepage. We'll also look at using class-based views in order to work with our post model and see how these class-based views can be useful. So let's go ahead and get started. So now that we'll be working with our blog post, we're going to be going back to our blog app that we created earlier in this series. So first things first, I'm going to open up the blog views and we're going to look at using class-based views in order to display, update, and delete new posts. So within our blog app, let's open up views.py and this is where we have our current home and about views. So, so far in this series, we've been using function-based views, and we should be fairly familiar with these by now. So our URL patterns are directed to a certain view, which are these functions, and the views then handle the logic for the routes and then render our templates. So now there are these things called class-based views, and those have a lot more built-in functionality that will try to handle a lot of the back-end logic for us. So I'm going to create a class-based view for our homepage so that we can see what this looks like compared to a function view. So first of all, there are different kinds of class-based views. There are list views, detail views, uh, create views, update views, and delete views, and a couple more. So if we think about it, a lot of websites have very similar functionality. So take a blog, for example. So you're going to have a web page where it lists all of your blog posts. So this would be a list view. Or if you think about a site like YouTube, for example, then there's going to be a subscriptions page where it lists all of your video subscriptions. So that is also a list view. Now, what would happen if we clicked on one of those blogs or on one of those videos from the list? Well, then it would take us directly to that blog or to that video and give us more details. And it would show us all of the content, the descriptions, comments, and all of that. So those details, that would be a detail view. And then we also have the ability to update and delete blogs or videos, and those would be update and delete views. So Django tries to predict some of this common behavior and give us these generic views that do a lot of the background work for us. So right now we have a home page that gets all of our post objects and passes them to our home.html template to display all of them there. So that would be a good candidate for a list view since our home page is listing all of our blog posts. So I'm going to rewrite this as a list view so that you can see the difference uh, between that and the current function that we have right now. So first I'll import list view up here at the top by saying from Django dot views, uh, let me spell that right, from Django dot views dot generic import list view. And now I'm going to create a new class because remember these are class based views and I'm going to call this. So I'll create it right below our home function so that we can see the differences here. So I will call this class post list view and I will inherit from that list view. And within our list view, we need to create a variable called model and this will tell our list view what model to query in order to create the list and in this case we want it to be all of our posts so we'll set that model equal to post now technically this is all that we need to do in order to create a list view uh, but we're going to need to add a little bit more to do this but first let me show you what this does if we try to use this list view like it is now and why we need to add a little bit more so in order to use this list view, we can open up our blog urls.py module and say that we want to use this post list view instead of our current home function. So within our blog app, let's open up those URLs and instead of using this views.home, we're instead going to use our post list view. So let me actually import that directly. So I'll keep the view import that we have now, but I'll also add a direct import. So I'll say from dot views import post list view and now instead of using our home view I'm going to replace this here with this post list view now when we use class based views we can't just pass in the class like this it has to be converted into an actual view and they have a method available that does this that's called as view so we need to add that on so I'll say dot as underscore view and then we need to actually execute that Okay, so now let's load this in our browser and see what this does. Now it's not gonna work right now, but let's look at the error that we get. So first of all, it looks like our test the, uh, server is running. So now let me reload uh, our homepage here. 
So we can see that it says that a template doesn't exist. So by default, class-based views look for templates of a certain naming pattern. So we can see here that it is looking for uh, blog forward slash post underscore list dot HTML. Uh, so let me write this out so that you can see this a little bit better. So this is looking for a template with the naming convention of the app and then forward slash the model and then underscore and then the view type dot HTML. So in this case, since our app is blog, it was looking in blog and then post is the model. So it was looking in post underscore and then the view type is list. So altogether it was looking for blog forward slash post underscore list dot HTML. So we could create a template with this naming convention and it would see that template, but we can also change which template that we want this view to use. And since we already have a template for our home view, let's go ahead and just do that and change the template that it's looking for. So we can do that within the views.py. So I'm gonna copy this just as a reference, go back to our views.py and I will paste this in. And now let's set a new template so that we can use our existing template for our home page. So I will say template underscore name is equal to uh, blog forward slash home dot HTML. And I'll just put this convention on the end of the line there so that we have that as a reference. Okay, and lastly, even with this change in place, this isn't going to work for us just yet because it doesn't know what we want the variable to be named in our template that we're going to be looping over. So for example, if we look up here in our home view function, we called all of our post objects post in our context, but by default, our list view is going to call that variable object list instead of post. So we can either go into our template and change it so that it's looping over object list, or we can set one more variable in our list view and let the class know that we want that variable to be called post instead. So since we already have the template created, let's just go ahead and set this variable here within our list view. So to change that, we can set an attribute here, and this will be called context underscore object underscore name. And we will set that equal to post, since that's what it is up here in our home template. And just setting those three attributes should do it. So now if we save those changes and then reload this in our browser, so reload our home page, then now we can see that we got the same thing as when we were using our function view. Now, one thing that isn't really right about our blog right now is the ordering of our post. So our first blog post at the top is actually our oldest one, and our latest post that we created is at the bottom. Now, that's probably not what we want. So if you're looking at someone's tweets or updates, then you probably want to see their latest ones at the top instead of needing to scroll all the way to the bottom to see their latest. So let's fix this. So in order to do this, we're going to need to change the order our query is making to the database. So let's open up our views.py and go into our list. And inside of our list view, in order to change the order, it's as simple as adding an ordering attribute with the field that we want to order on. So I will say, I will create a new attribute here called ordering and set this equal to, and we want to set this equal to uh, date posted. Now this will order our post from oldest to newest like it's doing right now. Now if we want to go from newest to oldest, then we can just put a minus sign here at the front. So now with that one small change, if we save that and then go back to our browser and reload this, then we can see that our newest post is at the top and that blog one, which is our oldest post, is at the bottom. Okay, so now we are using this list view instead of our older function view. So now let's look at the differences between those views that we have here. So here was our home function and here is our home list view.
So we can see that we're not really saving any lines of code in this example compared to the function view. But in our class-based view, we are basically just setting some variables. And in our function view, we had to actually render a function and explicitly pass in that information. Now, we could have saved some lines of code if we had used generic view defaults. So if I had created a template with the naming convention that our list view was looking for and used the variable name of object list inside of our template as as opposed to post like we're using here, then really the only line of code that we would have needed to set is the model and also the ordering if we wanted the ordering to be correct. So really you can actually get a working class-based view with just a single line of code if you stick to the conventions perfectly. So let's actually do this with our next class-based view and stick to the conventions so that we can see how this cuts down on code. Okay, so to do this, let's create a view for individual posts. Now, when we look at an individual post, this is going to be a detail view, since we're going to be looking at the details of a single post object. So to create a detail view, let's first import it. So up here at the top where we imported list view, let's also import uh, detail view. And now down here underneath my post list view, uh, let's actually copy this and paste another class uh, beneath here. And now let's change a couple of things. So instead of this being post list view, we'll call this post detail view. We're going to import from detail view instead of list view. And now I'm also going to get rid of the ordering, the context object name, and the template name. And I'm only going to leave the line with the model set to post. Okay, so with that model set to post, let's go create the URL pattern. So let's open up our URLs. Now, first, we'll need to import that post detail view. So up here at the top, let's import post uh, detail view. And now we need to create a route that takes us to a specific post. And to do this, we're going to use something that we haven't seen yet. So we have to create a URL pattern that contains a variable. So for example, let's say that we wanted to view the page for blog one, then that URL would be something like post forward slash one. And to go to blog two, it would be something like post forward slash two. And Django gives us the ability to add variables within our actual routes. So if we wanted to create a route where the ID of a post is actually part of the route, then we can create a route that looks like this. So I'm going to copy this home route as a starting point and paste this in. And now we can create a route with a variable just by saying, okay, post forward slash, and then these angle brackets here. And then we can say, uh, PK, and that is going to be the primary key of the post that we want to view. So if we go to post forward slash one, then we will go to the blog with the ID of one or with the primary key of one. Now we can also set what kind of variable this is. So if we know that this is going to be an integer, then we can tell Django that we only expect to see integers after post. Uh, so that will prevent, you know, put somebody putting in strings or anything like that. Now remember, we want to end all of our routes with a trailing slash. And now instead of going to post list view, the post detail view is what is going to handle this route. And instead of this being blog home, we will make this post dash detail. So again, by specifying that PK variable in the URL, uh, that allows us to grab that value from the URL and use it in our view function. And in this case, we're using a class-based view, so that will be passed to the class-based view. And remember how I said we're going to stick to conventions so that we can save some lines of code? Well, the reason that I called this variable PK is because that's what the detail view expects it to be in order to go grab that specific object. So we could change that by adding an attribute to our class, but if we leave it as PK, then we we can just leave it as is. Okay, so lastly, we need to create a template that will display our post details. Now, if I go back to my views here, then we can see that by default, our generic class-based view are going to be looking for a template with this naming convention. So it's going to be looking in the directory of the app name, which in this case is going to be blog, and then a template with the model name, which is going to be post, then an underscore, and then the template type, or and then the view type. So in this case, it's going to be detail. So this is going to be looking for a template called blog forward slash post underscore detail dot html. 
So let's create a template with that name so that it finds it automatically without us needing to specify a template name like we did in the post list view. So within our templates, I'm going to open the subdirectory of blog and within blog, let's create a new template and I will call this post underscore detail dot HTML. And this is going to be very similar to home.html, except we're just going to have a single post. So let me copy home.html and paste this in to post detail. But the difference here is that we don't need to loop over posts since there's only going to be one. So I'm going to remove our for loop here. And remember, there is an end to the for loop down here. And now I will unindent this and fix this. Let me fix the uh, indentation here. And there are just a couple more changes here. So for example, we don't need the title of our post to be a link anymore because that link on the home page is what takes us to the detailed view. So now we can just leave it as an H2 tag, but I still want this article title class here. So I'm going to copy that article title class, but now we can just remove the anchor tag. So I'm going to remove the closing anchor tag there and remove this whole opening anchor tag here. And then I'm going to paste that class into our H2 tag there instead. Okay, and just one more change that we need to make. So when we're dealing with detail views, it expects the context of this template to be called object. So right now we are calling this post. Uh, now we can change this to post by changing an attribute in our class. But like I said, we're going to try to keep to all of the defaults that it expects. So let's instead uh, change all of these post variables here to use object instead. So where we are printing out the image URL here, I'm going to say object.author. And for the author, I'm going to say object.author. For the date posted, we'll do object.date posted. For the title, we will say object.title. And for the content, object.content. And I think that is the last one. Okay, so now let's save this and open a post in our browser and see if this is working. So first I will uh, check the dev server and that is running. And now let's go to a URL for a specific post. So I will do forward slash post forward slash one. And we can see that that displays our blog one. So now we can see that we've got pages specifically for these individual posts. Now remember in our views, all we needed was to specify that model on our detail view and it handled the rest of that functionality for us. Okay, so now that we actually have these individual pages, uh, let's add links to these routes for the individual posts on our homepage. So right now, those are just dead links because I was waiting until we got the detail routes working. So if we go to the homepage right now, we can see that these actually go nowhere. So let's update these links to where they actually go to the uh, page for that individual post. So those are within the home.html template because that is where we are looping over these posts. So I'll open up home.html and here is the post title. That is where we have this link and currently it is a dead link. So in order to link to that individual post, we can use the URL tag that we've seen before. So I'll say URL and the name of that route was post detail. And now we also had a parameter in that URL. So remember, it's the ID for the individual post. So we can pass that into the route just by adding this on to the URL tag here. So I'll say post.id and that'll make sure that that gets passed in if I go to our URLs, that'll get passed in as the primary key here in the URL. So now let's go back to our browser and reload our homepage. And now if I hover over these, this is hard to see, but in the bottom left, it's telling me that the link is going to take me to post two. This one will take me to post one and this one will go to post three. So if we test some of these, then we can see that those are now working. Now, if I try to go to a post that doesn't exist, then I should get a 404 error. That means that the post with that ID doesn't exist. So if I go up and try to go to, let's see, instead I'll go to post 10 instead of post one. Now we don't have a post 10, so we can see here that this says page not found 404. And that's good that we get that error because that route wouldn't exist unless we had a post with that ID. Um, okay, so now we've seen a list view to list our posts and a detail view to get a specific post. Uh, now let's create a create 
update and delete view so that we can do all of those things with posts on the front end. So first, let's see how users can create new posts. So let's open back up our views here. So I have the views open here. I'll scroll up to the top because we need to import our create view. So right after detail view, I will import create view. Now we can see that our import line here is starting to get a little long. If you ever want to break up uh, an import line, then you can just put these within parentheses here and put these on different lines. So I will move all of those and then end the parentheses. Okay, so now for this create view, I'm just going to copy the detail view and modify it a bit. So I will copy the detail view and right underneath, I will paste another class and instead we'll call this post create view and we will inherit from create view. Okay, so this is going to be a view with a form where we create a new post. So the only other thing that we need to provide are the fields that we want to be in that form. So let's say that we want to fill in the title and the content for a new post. Now the date posted will be filled in automatically and we'll see how to set the author in just a second. Uh, but for now, we need to set the fields that we want in that form. So I'll say fields are equal to and we just want the title and the content and save that. Okay, so with that in place, let's update our URLs with this new create view. So within our URLs, I will import post create view. And just like in our views, I'm going to split these up on multiple lines because this is getting a little long. Now don't forget the parentheses around those. Okay, and now we'll create the URL pattern for creating a new post. So I'm just going to copy this line here and then change this around a little bit. So to create a new post, we'll go to post forward slash new and the post or and the view to handle that will be our post create view. And instead of post detail, we will call this post create. Okay, so at this point, we know that we need a template for this view, but it might not be named what you think it's going to be named. So for example, for the detail view, it was post underscore detail. Uh, so you might think that for this one, it should be post underscore create. But this one will actually share a template with the update view that we're going to be creating in a little bit. So they actually expect this template to be the name of the model followed by underscore form. So in this example, we're going to create a template called post underscore form. So up in my blog templates, I'm going to create a new file and let's create this called post underscore form dot HTML. And this form template is going to be really similar to the other templates that contain forms that we've created in this series so far. So actually it would save us time just to grab our register template because there will only be a few changes that we need to make from that. So within our users app, I'm going to go to those templates and I'm going to open the register template and copy that as a starting point and paste that in to our post form template. Okay, so our create view actually expects the form to be called form. So we can just leave that as is, and we'll be printing that form out using the crispy forms like we've done before. Uh, so all we need to do is change the legend and the submit button. And we can also remove this link down here at the bottom. So first I'll change the legend. So I'll change this to a uh, blog post since they'll be creating a blog post. Uh, for the submit button, I will change this to post and this link contained in this div right here that says already have an account. We don't need that link there. So we can just remove this entire div underneath our form. So now we only have the form on this page. So let's save that. Okay. So with that template created, let's see how this actually looks in the browser. So I will open this up and go back to our homepage. And now I'm going to go to the route of forward slash post forward slash new. And we can see that it is a form to create a new blog post. Okay, so this is looking really good. So this is why class based views are so powerful, because we didn't have to actually create a forms module to create this form or anything like that. 
all we did was tell our create view that we wanted to work with the post model and also that we wanted to have the title and the content fields within that form. Now it's not 100% perfect because there are still some changes that we need to make. Uh, so for example, if we try to create a new post right now, then it's not going to work. So if I come in here and say a title of blog four and then my fourth blog post, and if we submit that, then we can see that we're getting an error here. And it says that this is an integrity error, uh, not null constraint failed. It has no blog post dot author ID. And the reason that we're getting an integrity error is because we're trying to create a post, but it's saying that our author is null and that's not allowed. So every post needs to have an author. Now we want the author of the post to be the current logged in user, but it doesn't know that. So we have to tell it in some way. So the way that we can do that is to override the form valid method for our create view. And that will allow us to add the author before the form is submitted. So let's do that now. So back in our views, so I'm going to go to our uh, blog views here and down to our post create view. And within this create view, we need to override the form valid method. So I will create a method here that is form valid. And this takes in self and form as arguments. And within here, we can simply set the author on the form by saying form dot instance dot author is equal to self dot request dot user. So basically this is saying, hey, that form that you are trying to submit, uh, before you do that, uh, take that instance and set the author equal to the current logged in user. And once we do that, then we can validate the form. So we will return super dot form underscore valid and then pass in that form as an argument. So basically this line here is just running that form valid method on our parent class and that would have been run anyway. But whenever we override it right here, we are just setting the author before that gets ran. Okay, so that should do it for setting the author. So now let's try to create a new post in the browser and see what we get. Now I'm gonna let you know that this still isn't gonna work, but let's look at the error and see if it is helpful. So we'll go back to the uh, post forward slash new and try to create another post. So uh, fourth post and submit. Okay, so we're no longer getting the integrity error about the author, so that's good. Now we're getting an error that says that we don't have a redirect URL. It says in the error message, I know this is a little small here, it says either provide a URL to redirect to or define a get absolute URL method on the model. So basically it's telling us that it created the post successfully, but it doesn't know where we want to be redirected to now. So if we go back to the homepage, then we can see that our post was actually created here. So that's good. So now to get this working 100%, we just need to let the view know where we want to redirect once we've created the post. Now, ideally, we would just redirect to the detail page of the post that we just created. And that's actually what it tries to do, but it just doesn't know how to get there, so we have to tell it. And it said this on the error page, but the way to tell Django how to find the URL of a model object is to create a get absolute URL method in our model that returns the path to any specific instance. So let's open up our blog models and I'll show you what I mean by this. So let's open up our blog model. So in our blog app, I'm going to open up models.py and within our post model, we need to create that get absolute URL method so that Django knows how to find the location to a specific post. So first, we're going to be getting the URL of a particular route. And in order to do this, we need to use the reverse function. Now you might be wondering why we're not using the redirect function uh, that we've seen earlier in this series, but redirect and reverse are a little different. So redirect will actually redirect you to a specific route but reverse will simply return the full URL to that route as a string. So that is the difference between those. And in this case, we simply want to return the URL as a string and let the view handle the redirect for us. So first we have to import the reverse function. So up here at the top, I'm going to say from Django.urls import reverse. 
And now down in our post model, now we'll create that get absolute URL method to tell Django how to find the URL to any specific instance of a post. So to do this, we can say get absolute underscore URL, and this will take self as an argument. And now we can return the path to a specific post. So we're going to return reverse. So like I said, reverse will return the full path as a string. So the full full path that we want to get is the path to the post dash detail route. And it remember it needs a specific post with a primary key. So we will set our quarks equal to and remember that URL parameter is called PK for primary key. And the value for that is going to be self dot PK. So the instance of a specific post uh, primary key. Okay, so now if we save that, then now let's try to create one more post and hopefully with these changes, this will be working fully. So let's open up the browser here. And I'm going to go to forward slash post forward slash new, and I will create blog five, and then my fifth post and I will submit that and we can see that it created our post and redirected us right to the detail page for the post that we just created. So that's great. Now, if you just want that to go to the home page instead of the specific post, then you could set an attribute in the create view called success URL and just set that to the home page instead. But in our case, I think it's better to redirect to this detailed view. Okay, so that is a lot of functionality that Django gives us after filling in just a few different attributes. And that would have taken a lot more work in other frameworks. Now that would have also taken a lot more code if we'd done that with regular function views instead. So we would have needed to create forms and handle the post requests and save the information and all of that. But with these class based views, we can do a lot of this just by uh, knowing what attributes need to be set. So you can definitely save yourself a lot of lines of code once you get familiar with this kind of stuff. Okay, now there's actually one more thing that we need to do with this create view. So we shouldn't be able to create a post unless we're logged in as some user. So we need to make it so that if we try to access this route and we're not logged in, then we'll just be redirected to the login page. Now we saw how to do this with function based views when we created our user profile page. So for function based views, we use that login required decorator. Well, we can't use decorators on classes. So what we are going to use here is something called a login mix in. And and that's basically just a class that we inherit from that will add that login functionality to the view. So let's go ahead and add this in. So I'm going to go back to our uh, views here and go up to the top because we need to import this. And here at the top, I will import this by saying from Django.contrib.auth.mixins import, uh, and this is kind of long, login required mixin. And now we just want to add this to the classes that we are inheriting from. And we'll want to add this to the very first one on the far left. So I'm going to copy this and go down to our post create view. And we want to add this to the far left. So we want to inherit from the login required mix in and then the create view. So now if we save that and go back to our browser and log out and then try to add a new post. So I'll log out and then I will go to uh, post forward slash new. And then you can see that we are redirected to the login page. So that's good. Okay, so now let's create an update view so that we can update posts on the front end. So we should kind of be getting used to this by now. So let's go back to the views here. And at the top, we will add to our list of imports. So I will import an update view. And now down here under our create view, I'm just going to copy our create view because the update view is going to be very similar. So I will paste that in. And I will, uh, let's see, make call this uh, post update view here. And we want to import from update view. And now we can actually leave this exactly the same in terms of the model and fields and the form save method. So let's add a path now to our URL patterns. So let's go to our URLs.py and we can uh, just copy our, actually let me copy the uh, post detail view here. Oh, and let's also not forget to import the view that we just created. So we created that post update view. So now let's do the route for this. So I copied the post detail view and pasted that in here. 
Now to update a post, we're going to need to include that primary key with that route as well, because we have to know what uh, post that we are updating. So we will do post forge slash this primary key. And then after that, we will do forge slash update. And we will let the post update view handle that route. And for the name here, we will do post dash update. Okay, and since we are providing that primary key in the URL to the post that we want to update, then Django, uh, the Django update view will take care of everything else with the information that we've already provided. And even for the template, it's just going to use that same post form template that we created for the create view. So we don't even need to add another template. And so now this should be working. So if I open up the browser and I try to update a post, so let's up go to the browser here and log in. So I'll log in as a user. And now let's try to update our one of our posts. So I'll go to this blog five and then go to forge slash update after post five. Then we can see that we get a form and this is already filled in with the current title and content. So let's try to update this. So I'll say blog five updated, my fifth updated post and submit that. So we can see that that updates our post. Uh, so that was pretty easy to put together. Now, when you're building an application like this, you kind of need to be thinking about the different ways that people could use your app or try to abuse it and always try to plan for that. So for example, right now we have a login check on being able to update a post and to be able to create a post, but we aren't checking if the author of the post is the person trying to access this update page. And that's important because we only want the people who wrote the post to be able to edit it. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to the homepage, and then I click on a blog written by another user. So this test user here as blog three, if I go to that and then type in update after uh, post three, then we can see that we can also update this blog entry. So that's not good. So that would be like if someone could edit your tweets or something like that. So we want to put a check in place so that only the author of the post can actually update it. So to do this, we're going to use another mix in. And first we have to import it. So let's go back to our views and go up to the top here to our imports. And I'm going to import a mix in called user passes test mix in. And now let's add this to our update view inheritance. So I will copy that and go down to our update view here and I will add this to our inheritance. So it still needs to be to the left of the update view. Uh, so I'll just put it right after the login required mix in there. And once we have that in place, we can create a method called test funk. And that is a function that our user passes test mix in will run in order to see if our user passes a certain test condition. So I'll just create this underneath the form valid method that we have already created. So I will say def test underscore funk is what we need to call that. And it takes self as the argument there. And now we want to get the exact post that we're currently updating. The way that we can get this is using a method of the update view called get object. So we can get the post by saying post is equal to self dot get object. And that will get the post that we are currently trying to uh, update. And that's actually a method. So we need to put the parentheses on there. And now we can check to make sure that the current user is the author of the post. So I'll say if self dot request dot user is equal to post dot author. So this gets the current logged in user and it's checking if this is equal to the author of the post that we are trying to update. So if that is true, then we want to allow them to update the post. So we can just return true. And otherwise, if that conditional is not met, then we will just return false. Now we could just return that conditional as one line right there, but I think this is a little bit more readable how we have it now. Um, okay, so with that test function in place, that should prevent any users from trying to update other people's posts. So let's go back to our browser and reload the page where we were trying to update someone else's post. So this is currently test users post. So if I reload this, 
then we can see that we get a 404 or 403 response that says that this is forbidden. And that is the exact response that we want. So that is good. Um, okay, so that does it for the update view. So lastly, we're also going to want to create a delete view for deleting posts. And the delete view is very similar to our detail view. So I'm going to go back to our views and import our delete view. So let's go back to our views here and let's import the delete view from here at the top. So we'll add that in. And like I said, this will be very similar to the detail view. So let's just uh, reuse that. So I will grab the post detail view and I'll put this underneath our update view here. So now we just want to change this to say uh, post delete view and we want to inherit from delete view. Now, unlike our detail view, we want to require a user to be logged in here and also require that the user is the author of the post in order to see the delete view. So we'll just copy those inherited mix-ins from our update view. So I will go up to our update view here, just grab that login required mix-in and the user passes test mix-in and paste those in there. And just a reminder, those have to be to the left of the delete view inheritance. And now we'll also copy the test function from our update view, since that will be exactly the same. We're going to be running that same test of making sure that that current post uh, has the author of the current logged in user. Okay, so now all we need to do is add a path to our URL patterns. So I'll open up our URLs, uh, go up here and import that post delete view. So import post delete view. And now let's create a delete path. So I'll copy our update view here. So we want this to be the post forward slash primary key forward slash delete. And we want to send this to the delete view. And the name that we want here is going to be post delete. Okay, so now all this needs is a template. And the template that this expects is just a form that asks if we're sure that we want to delete the post. And if we submit the form, then the post will be deleted. So let's create this. So this template is going to be similar to the others, except it's going to be called post underscore confirm underscore delete dot HTML. So within our blog templates, I'm going to create a new file. And this is called post underscore confirm underscore delete dot HTML. And I'm just going to copy from our post form template that was used for our create and update templates. Uh, so I am going to copy from here and paste that into our post confirm delete template. And now I'll make a couple of changes here. So the legend, instead of this being blog post, I'm going to change this to delete post as the legend. Now this doesn't actually pass in a form for us. So we can actually remove the crispy forms and the form line here. So I will remove where we are loading in crispy forms and I will also remove our form line. So really this is just going to be a page that asks us if we really want to delete the post. And if we hit the submit button, then the post request will simply delete the post. So we just have to ask the user. So underneath the legend here, I'm just going to put in an H2 tag and I'm just going to say, are, whoops, are you sure you want to delete the post? And then we will actually just put in the title for the post so they know which post they are about to delete. So remember the context here is called object, just like the uh, detail view. So we can say object dot title. And now for our buttons at the bottom, uh, we currently have one that says post. So this is the submit button. This is what will confirm the deletion. So let's be sure that the user knows this. So in this button, we will say yes, delete. And let's also give this a class of outline danger instead of info, because deletions should have a visual warning since it's permanent. So instead of this being uh, outline info, I will say outline danger. And now let's also put a cancel link that takes them back to the post detail view just in case they didn't mean to delete this post or change their mind. So I'm going to copy our button here. Uh, but after I copy this, so let me paste another button underneath here. Uh, but now I'm going to change this to an anchor tag. So instead of a button that will submit 
uh, we will change this to an anchor tag and also remove this type equals submit there. Now, like I said, we want this to be a cancel button. So I will uh, change the text in here to be cancel. And we want to set an href that just takes us back to the detail view of this exact post. So to do that, within our href, we can put in a code block here and say uh, URL. And we want to go to the URL of post detail. And to pass in the primary key of this post, we can just say object.id. So that will create a URL of the post detail page for uh, this post ID. Um, and then lastly, instead of outlining this in danger, uh, we only want the danger one to be the confirmation of the deletion. For the cancel, we'll just make this more muted. So a good bootstrap style for this is secondary. So we'll say button outline dash secondary. Okay, so that should do it. So let's bring up our browser and see if this works. So if we go to our browser, then I can go back to our homepage here and find a post that we have written. And now I will try to go to forward slash delete. And it says, are you sure that you want to delete the post blog five updated? So if we say cancel, then it should take us back to that post page, which it did. Uh, so now let's go back to the delete route. But now if we say yes, that we want to delete this post and click on that, then we can see that we get an error. And we get an error because it's saying that it doesn't know where to redirect us. Now, if we read the error, then it actually tells us exactly what we need to do. It says that we need to provide a success URL. So we'll go do that. Now, when we get a failure on deletion, it actually doesn't do the deletion just in case. So that post will still be there. Uh, so if I go back to the homepage, then we can see that that post still exists. So now I'm going to go back to our delete view and add a success URL so that our deletion knows where to redirect us if that works. So let's go back to our blog views. So I will open up our views.py and go down to our delete view. And in our delete view, all we need to do is add a success URL attribute. And we'll just set this to the home page. So it can't go to the page of that post like our create and update views did because that post is deleted and no longer there. So the home page sounds like a good place to send them. So we will just say success underscore URL is equal to, and we'll just send them to the home page. Okay, so now let's open that post and try to delete that again. So I am going to go back to the home page here. Let's click on blog five and I will go to blog five forge slash delete. And it says, are you sure you want to delete the post? We'll click yes. And we can see that that post was now deleted. Okay, so that works. So that is great. So in this one video, we've added the ability to list, view, create, update, and delete posts using these new class-based views. So that is a lot of functionality that we were able to add in here during the short time of this video. So now that we have all of this working, let's make a few changes to our site just to get everything working together a bit better. So right now, all of this functionality is working, but we don't have any links in place to actually get to any of these routes that we just created. So let's create those. So first of all, let's put a link in our navigation bar to create a new post. So our navigation bar is in the base.html template of our blog. So let's open that up. So I will go to our blog templates and open up base.html. And if we scroll down to our navigation, which is right here, then I'm going to add this to the part of our navigation that the user can only see if they are logged in. So that is this section right here. So I'm just going to copy this profile link and paste this in and then change this. So instead, I want this to be uh, a URL for post dash create. And we want the uh, link text just to say new post. Okay, so now we have a link to create a new post. So now let's add links to update and delete our post. So I think a good place for these would be within the post detail page. And if the user is the user who wrote the post, then they'll see links to update and delete the post if they'd like. So that will be in the post detail template. So within our blog templates, let's open up the post detail template. 
And let's just put these buttons right after the author and the date. So right after the author and date here, uh, we can put in a conditional. So we will say if object dot author is equal to user, which is the current logged in user, uh, then we can add in the buttons for the update and delete links. So first I'm going to end this if statement. So end if, and now within this conditional, if the author is the current logged in user, then we can add these links to update and delete. So I'll add an href here and we want this to be a URL. So we'll say URL and this will be a URL to the post dash update route. And we need to tell uh, which object we want to update. So this will be object dot ID and it'll pass that in to the URL correctly. And for the link text here, we will just say update. Now let's also give this some classes. So we'll say class is equal to BTN, which is a bootstrap button. And we will also say BTN dash secondary. That's kind of a more muted button for update. And let's also give this a class of BTN dash SM, which is a smaller button. And also I want a margin top of one. So MT dash one and a margin bottom of one as well. So MB dash one. In case you guys were wondering, I've kind of played around with these styles before I recorded this video. So that's how I know what, uh, how I want these to look. So now I'm going to copy this anchor tag here. And now let's make the delete button. So right underneath the update button, I will paste in a new link here and we will have this be a delete button. And we want this to go to post delete for the URL. And for the class here, instead of this being button secondary, let's make this button danger so that they know that this is a delete button. Okay, so with those changes in place, we should have links to all of the routes that we created in the video. So let's give this one last look in the browser. So we will save all of those and open this up in the browser. So we can see that since I'm logged in, we now have a new post link up here. So if I click on that, then it takes us to the route where we can create a new post. Uh, so if I go back to the home page and click on a post that I have created, then we can see that we have an update and delete link here. If I click on update, then we can see it takes us to the update route. If I click on the delete link, then it takes us to the delete route. Now there's one more thing with this post detail uh, template here. I actually wanted these to be on a new line. So I think I forgot to wrap those in a div. So let me open that back up. Luckily that was the last thing we were just looking at. Uh, so these two buttons here inside this conditional and our post detail template, let's actually wrap those in a div. So I will create a div there. And now let's just put those inside of there and fix that indentation. Now let's reload this. Okay, now we can see that those buttons are underneath there and I think that looks a lot better. Now let's also make sure that that conditional is working by going to a post that someone else has written. And when we go to that uh, post detail, we can see that the update and delete links aren't there. So that conditional is working. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how you can use class-based views to list out different objects from our database and also how to view, update, and delete those objects using these views. Now in the next video, we'll learn how to paginate our site so that our posts are broken up into different pages. And we'll also see how to create a page for specific users' posts. But if you have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest ways is simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.